a Hall of Famer. He is a three-time Super Bowl champion, eight Pro Bowlers. Many believe as good a tight end as the sport ever gave us. Shannon Sharp, who only, only, I get him <laughs> twice a year. That's it. Because he leaves undisputed and he goes and works out. And I get you twice a year. So let me start with this. Brady receivers, are we freaking yes. out or, or are we looking at a reality where Chris Hogan is the guy? Yeah, um, this is as bad as I've seen it also, Colin. You look, I mean, three guys got cut. Eric Decker was retired like two years ago. He just didn't tell anybody till yesterday. <laughs> um, he's what they call a shot flip player. His body has failed him and he's lost confidence. You watch him play in the games. He's like, I shouldn't be here. You watch in practice, they show clips of practice. I shouldn't be here. I think they allowed him to to retire to give him his dignity because he wasn't going to make the squad. Yeah. He, was, he was that bad. They released Jordan Matthews, released Malcolm Mitchell. Uh, Kenny Britt got released. They traded Brandon Cooks. They can make all they make all these moves because they believe Tom with a healthy Gronk uh, uh, and Chris Hogan, that will be enough. But man, you're asking an awful lot. From marginal players. Yeah, they're marginal they're at best. Those guys, I mean, Gronk, I believe Gronk is the most n dominant non-quarterback in all of football, regardless of position, defensive line, cornerback, wide receiver. But I only get him for 10 games. You know he's going to get nicked at some point. Even Chris Hogan, he normally misses time during the course of the year with an injury. But uh, if anybody can do it, it's these two, Tom Brady and Coach Belichick. By the way, I, I said this. I have never, when I say Team LeBron, I don't think Lakers or Cavs. I think of Maverick Carter, Rich right. Paul. right. I totally back NBA players traveling with their agent, yeah. a confidant, maybe a shoe marketing guy. Right. But I say Brady and Russell Wilson team, I think Patriots Seahawks. Right. Thomas said, hey, listen, I am the greatest player of all time. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to have a career extending trainer with right. me. And people are freaking out. Right. Why is it that we... I have I th I I am for quarterback right. saying eh, the franchise tag is terrible. I think the thing is what's different is that when Maverick Carter or Rich Paul or Randy Mims travel with LeBron, he's not trying to recruit other players. They look at Alex Guerrero and the Patriots team staff. If they say we didn't want you to ice for twenty minutes, and Guerrero says, "Nah, you need only ice for 10, There's where the conflict comes in. If he's only going to work with Tom or the guys he's working in, but guys, I believe this is me. I haven't talked to anybody. I believe other guys were going. Well, I see what he's doing for Tom. I see what he's doing for Gronk. Well, let me go get a second opinion. And so now we're paying the training staff millions of dollars, and they're going outside to a guy that's not trained through the uh, traditional methods uh, of, of school or orthopedics, and they're getting their advice from him. I think that's where the problem came in at, but I don't, I don't have a problem either um, because normally what happens is that you find somebody that's really good, you recommend him, a lot of guys start using him, and he does travel with the team. We had one in Denver that did the very same thing. But I think that's the biggest difference, Colin. If, if Randy Mims and, and Richie Paul were traveling, and that's LeBron's team, and they started trying to recruit, I think therein lies would be a problem that the team would have. And it's like, nah, I think we need to step back from this. So I, I said this. is I, I grew up in a family of chaos. So my stepfather came in and stabilized it. Okay. And I've always believed that not everybody can be you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not everybody's going to be a Hall of Famer. Right. But there are people that enter our lives. Mm -hmm. It can be an aunt, an uncle, right. a, a coach that stabilize a room. Yes. And there's real value. Right. The Cowboys pre dac were a mess, right? And the Cowboys are the loudest, most distracted brand in a North American sports. Right. Last night, Dak doesn't play. Now I know it was backups, right? That's what they look like before Dak, right? Okay, I'm not saying Dak is great, but in 32 starts, 22 wins, five one possession losses, are we undervaluing Dak on what he is doing? With I got Zeke, I had Dez, I got Jerry. Boy, he looks like a stabilizing force. When he doesn't play, they're a mess. Yeah, everybody can't play quarterback, and everybody can't play quarterback for a high-profile team. And the thing is, although they were out, they were without Dak, you look at what Dak's going to be throwing to. I don't know how much better it's going to get when he gets in there. I mean, Michael Gallup, we're going to be counting so on Michael. So you don't like Dallas this year? Mm, I'm, not, I'm not on – I think their defense can be really good, but their offense is going to be predicated on Zeke. How many can Zeke rush for 1,800-plus yards? That's what it's going to take for the Cowboys to be good. Can, those receivers, those t who is a tight end? I think I can. I might can make the squad at tight end. I'm 50 with a bad knee, <laughs> and I think I might make the Cowboys at tight end. So you don't, you're not as big on Dak as I am. 
No, um, no, because I think everything is really predicated on Zeke. He had an opportunity to show me that he can do. Oh, I'm fine without Zeke. You see these top quarterbacks, Tom Brady. I don't care if I got a running game, Ben. I don't care if I got a running game, uh, uh, Breeze or Rogers. These guys that can take that next step, and that's what you say. When they say they're going to make the offense more Dak friendly, they're saying we're going to ask you to turn around and hand the ball off to Zeke. We're going to ask you to get Zeke more involved in the passing game because he doesn't throw the ball down the field. That's not his expertise. Well, they're going to shorten the field. It's like, well, you're not going to throw it over our head, so we're going to play close to the line of scrimmage. We're going to, they're going to try to take Zeke away. They're going to make this young man beat them throwing the football and see if he can beat them throwing the football over the top. Uh, Shannon Sharp, 14 years, eight Pro Bowls, three rings, gold jacket guy. Okay, I'm going to name... Um, I'm going to name a quarterback battle, and you tell me who should start and why. Okay. Tyrod Taylor, Baker, Mayfield, who starts and why? I'm going to say Tyrod because I believe this team is ready to win right now. It's hard for a rookie to come in and start re- winning right away unless everything is in place. Now, you get, um, Ben didn't start right away. Tommy Maddox got hurt the first game, and then Ben came in. And they babysat him for about six games. But they were loaded at every position. Right. Defense was ready to go. Sound running game. Hines, so they were they were straight across the board. I believe, and plus, they went 1-31 over the past two seasons. Hugh Jackson doesn't have the luxury of going 0-3, 0-4 with a rookie quarterback because that means Greg Williams or Todd Haley is going to finish the rest of the season out. Hugh knows that, so I believe Tyrod will start. Start. Sam Darnold, Teddy Bridgewater, who starts and why? Well, looking at it now, I, I think Sam Darnold will start. You got a ten. I think you got ten million guaranteed in Josh McCown. I don't know if somebody's going to take that contract. Teddy Bridgewater is only five million dollars, and he has value. You can get something for Teddy Bridgewater. No question. The question is that I have for Teddy Bridgewater with his injury history and concussion history. How good can he be? The guy missed basically two years, and he has a history of concussions. So how good can he be? I haven't seen him long term. I haven't seen him play consistently for a year or two. That's, so that's the problem that teams are going to be up against. Yeah, he throws the ball. I mean, he's been unbelievable in the preseason. But you got to realize he was a starter, and sometimes he's playing against guys they're going to be uh, coaching in about a week. Finally, John Gruden. I suspect this could be a mess. Shannon Sharp thinks. I agree. I, I don't think everybody, well, well, Gruden is, you know, this, and the quarterback whisper. I, I just, 10 years is a long time to be away from something. In football? It's. It's hard for me. It's hard for me to believe that a surgeon can be away, does no surgery for ten years, and just go right back in and pick back up. It's just hard for me to believe. There's, I said this. Silicon Valley is like this. Tech changes every year. Yes. Uh, football changes every two yes. years. There are, you know, the post office today looks like the post office ten years ago. Right. There are industries that don't change. That's why people don't use it too. <laughs> <laughs> Newspapers. Yes. They look the same as twenty years ago. They do. But football. I mean, there's no. There's no huddles anymore. No, and there's really no fullback. Everybody play bases out of three wide receiver set, one tight end on the running back. The fullback is is, ice, is an eyesore. It's, it's a relic. Things things are so is, are so different now. Um, the way you the way you meet, the way you practice, the way you attack the quarterback. Uh, now they got this helmet rule. Things have changed so much. I mean, in the last two years, also, let alone 10. Shannon, players are more empowered now. Oh, yeah. 10 years ago, if a coach in the NFL came in and said, no politics understood. If a coach came in and said, no politics, half the room's like, well, I got an opinion on politics. Right. The world's changed. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a different time now, and everybody feels that they have a voice. Everybody feels emboldened. Sure. Well, you think it's changed. You let players get guaranteed contracts <laughs> like they get in basketball, like they get in baseball. That's why b- basketball players, and they say, well, why basketball players will take on issues that football players can't? Because Steph Curry's getting all $205 million of his dollars. <laughs> and right. the guy in football that signed for $100 million, he's only going to get that forty gar- fully guaranteed money. And those guys don't want to risk that. I love having you on. I love being on. Do you remember two years ago, before Undisputed Start, you came on this couch. That was almost three years ago. Three years ago. And I said to management, um, get him a show fast. <laughs> I, lo- I love what you've done. I love having you on. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you uh, speaking up for me behind the scenes. A lot of people don't know that, but I know what you did for me. I appreciate it. Shannon Sharp, Undisputed. Back in a second. You too, it's the Joy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.